just went in the other room and and we sanded off that problem right there uh, this was coming up and it actually well it makes contact down here now but we said that that's okay because it can open up and you can get your shaft in and out and you'll be able to pull it down lock it all right so basically our upper arm is all taken care of with the exception of the the push bolt so we're going to be making the upper push bolt just like this now we got a piece of half inch all thread and we're going to turn this in we're going to turn that in then we're going to piece of, take a piece of square stock and we're going to silver solder it on and then just hand shape that and then that's going to be the screw this is not a high pressure screw this is just to put you know a little pressure behind the foot to hold it then you lock this down and that supports it all right we got this square head that we have to put on our screw that we're going to be making and I got I went ahead and of course I don't have any half inch steel square stock in hand but I have tons of of uh, brazed and and uh, carbide tool bits around now this one here is not a popular one but I'm not going to damage or throw this away and all I want to do is sneak three eighths of an inch off of that end so I'm going to go ahead and take the hacksaw and I'm going to cut off a short length here and then I'm going to set it up and I'm going to drill a, a hole through it and I'm going to turn the end of my threads and then I'm going to silver solder that right on the end there. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this here and nothing really fancy about it. We can go ahead and we'll set it up like this. First we're going to go in and sand the burrs off of it and everything else. Then we'll go ahead and go straight down through the center and we'll drill a hole straight through it in the bridge port. And then we're going to bring it over here and after we turn the shank on the threads and we'll silver solder that right here. Uh, let's speed it up just a little bit here. Now we decided to go in with a 3 8. So uh, where's our bolt at here? Okay. This is going to be 3 8 through the bore, then we're going to turn our stud 3 8 and then we're going to turn it a little radius in here so it has that effect right there so we can get that visual effect. We've already turned this nub on the threads on the other end. So this is going to be similar, this end and that about the same and then 3 8 of an inch. We slip this on, silver solder it, spin that, we're done. Okay, just a, a little tiny bit of a chamfer here. Just for silver solder to flow into around the outside edge if it needs some. Okay, and that's not extremely hot. Okay, let's see. All right, that is like four, 410. 410 is that diameter there. And for how long? 410 for a half an inch. Just checking what diameter we have here. Okay. That was 400. Okay, so we're here. pretty that'll look pretty close to uh, that if it was the other direction okay let's go silver solder that end on there and it looks like we got a bolt all right I'm not sure if I like these little containers here I like that big tub um, but anyway, regardless, we're going to put some on here, 
We're going to put some in there. That's just all so they can have their friggin' name on the side of that thing. Okay. There we go. And now I'm going to take, because I don't want too much of it coming down there on the threads. And basically, if you wipe off your silver solder flux, the silver flux or stay flux, off of your part, it doesn't tend to drip down in there so much. Besides that, pretty much where you keep the heat is where you're going to draw that in. Okay. Uniform heat, I learned, and also too, don't even try to put the, the flux or the silver to it until you get pretty much both parts pretty close to the same. Sometimes it takes a little while to get that inner one, okay? Now we're close. All right, it took a little while to go down in there and fill it up. All right. It takes longer to preheat it and warm it and get it up to temperature than it actually does to, to get it to suck to it. Silver solder flows in real nice. If it's prepped, it's clean, and you have plenty of stay flux on it. One of my favorite things to do as a machinist is to have abstract items or parts that, you know, come in and some things are cast or forged or, you know, they're just, they're just not, you don't just put them in a machine and machine them. So it takes a couple different steps or whatever to, you know, shape them out or whatever. And the challenge is to get those shapes. You know, I also, I stood back and I, I noticed what I did here, but it doesn't really matter. It's going to, it's going to still push it straight in, but I was off slightly here. But I was just eyeballing the cutout for this socket to set in here. But in, in the overall scheme, you know, this, <laughs> this looks pretty good. All right. Now that completes remaking the steady rest um, with the exception of this nose here now I made this out of steel versus cast these are usually cast iron here and they're used to you know bearing material sometimes I've seen some of the machinists actually braze uh, on the nose of these so that there's bronze materials to go against your your shafting that you're working on or one of my favorite things is to take a leather belt and put a leather belt around and, and, and wrap the leather all the way around have the pigtail coming out I used to just have a little clamp that would clamp the uh, the leather there and bring this down and squirt oil in and support your load with your leather and it would take the harmonics and the, and the vibrations out of your machine work and it was also very forgiving it wouldn't mar up or mark your 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 items this basically completes the steady rest and Really, we're, we're kind of done with it actually here up on the mill, but we can go ahead and we can turn it um, so it's functioning. We can loosen it, open it, close it. We can adjust it down. The, uh, the actual clamp is over on the mill. We have that. And we'll go look and we'll put this in on the lathe here a little bit later just to get a, a good idea and a picture of it. And we're going to take some more uh, dimension stuff off of it because I don't have one for my south bend and uh you know we may do that in fact actually in here i ordered up some bearings here and they just happened of course this is this is saturday so i i asked for a saturday delivery only because i forgot what day of the week it was and then it came down to needing these things and 
They got two different brands because that's what they had in stock. These are from my bearing supplier. And uh, we have, uh, looks like BBCs, and we have McGill. And these are little cam rollers. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to mount the little cam rollers in on the steady rest. Oh, those are cuties, huh? <laughs> little quarter inch hole. And I got the national fine nuts in there and I ordered that that's going to be just perfect on the back side for the nuts. So we just got to drill three quarter inch holes in there and mount up these rollers. Now let's take a look and see what the difference between the McGill's and the RBC's is what they're called. This is a trick box here. <laughs> ah, I told you it was a trick box. I see absolutely nothing different between the two of them. Just giving you a, holding them up here close. I mean, it is pretty, I mean, they're black. <laughs> same width, same, you know, it looks like pretty close to the same. Just a little different lettering and marking on them. Slight little different Allen size. And both stall, uh, solid. Alright. Alright, so we're going to pick uh, three to put in this one here. And the other three are going to be for the steady rest I'm going to make for my own lathe. Now these two jaws here on the steady rest aren't quite as high as that right there. Because they've been worn down over the years. And uh, I got them standing up in here and I'm preheating them. I'm going to... I'm going to braise some height into them so that we can finish them off with the sander and then when we drill down through here, they're all going to be closely the same strength, the same size, and the same distance.
We're gonna go grab our pliers so we can lay them down. Okay, we got them. Uh, we got them laying down here, and we're gonna go ahead and just draw. We're gonna lay a little bead on each side here so we get some width to it. surface up above the face of it. All right, now we're going to do this one here. There's way more than enough material to grind, sand, and shape those two to look just like this. And then we'll go drill that hole in there for the can door. because this is cast iron, it's pretty soft and you don't need it on the braze either. And uh, we found found out that the uh, this little quarter inch reamer I found with like a thou and a half over two and a half, you know it's like uh, 250 one and a half.
when you get in, in doubt, pull them out, wipe them off, and put them back in. Okay, you get a little chip or something underneath the parallel, it could cock your part. Just good practice. Paint brushes are really good to get in there and get your, your chips and all your debris out instead of your air all the time. Just so you're not blowing as many chips around, I guess. Okay, and if your parallels go back in and slide and sit there, usually that means that <clears throat> there's not a chip underneath them, otherwise they kind of like fall into the center sometimes. Alright, and... There we go. kind of like highlighting how I actually ended up packing this up here because it, it definitely didn't come in <laughs> I don't know where the box is now <laughs> it, it's uh, pretty holy anyway we're going ahead and uh, we're going to give it a little bit of foam here pretty sure that that's not going to rip now. So anyway, Tony, I'm going to run this down to the post office and uh, and your package should be arriving uh, here probably, uh, you'll probably get it before Friday. All right. Hey, cut the glare and wear Turnwright Machine Works ball cap. Order one today.
get her done.